Okay, today we're going to turn up the injection pump on a 6.2 liter diesel. For this job, if you have cruise control, you'll need a 7 millimeter socket and on a ratchet or a screwdriver deal like this to remove the cruise control servo. You'll also need a flat screwdriver to take the um, screws at the top of the injection pump and to undo the throttle clip on the cruise control servo and some assorted metric uh, allen wrenches to, do, to remove the guide screw or guide pin and turn up the power screw inside the injection pump. Also what would help is a turkey baster or some other means to remove the fuel from the fuel bowl so you can see the screw while you're turning it. Also tools needed is a 15 16 uh, socket on a ratchet or a breaker bar or something to turn the engine over to line up the power screw inside the injection pump. So to start We'll start by removing the cruise control servo, which isn't very hard. Three screws, two hoses, a plug-in, and a little clip that holds it on. Just like that. This plug-in's a little bit trick to get, or a little bit of pain to get off. Hook it with the screwdrivers perfectly. Hopefully, this camera's pointed the right way, or this is a big waste of time. Okay, and there's this little clip inside the injection pump, or not, on the side of the cruise control servo that you have to unhook. You'll figure it out when you're doing this on your own. That's what it looks like. Okay, so that's off. You remove the cruise, or unhook that, the cruise control servo off of that linkage. Undo the vacuum hose and the sensing, or the hose that runs the cruise that comes from the cab, undo that, and your servo's unhooked. Now, there's a screw that I've already removed in the high idle solenoid, which is this deal, which is this deal here. You just uh, undo this one screw, take, remove the screw from the top down here, lean it back and out of the way so that you can have access to the ejection pump cover. Next, remove the cold advance wire off of the injection pump co cover and off of the high idle solenoid. Then remove the pink power wire off the injection pump. This wire is what makes the engine shut off when you turn the key off and stuff like that. Okay, now I'll need a pair of pliers to undo this uh, return line off the injection pump. Okay. So we got a pair of pliers. I forgot to bring that. You need a pair of pliers to get this uh, clamp off of the return line. Then you just pull it off. Just sometimes a struggle, especially when the engine is ice cold and you're sitting overnight. Okay, so I got that off. You'll probably hear fuel gurgling back into the tank after a few seconds or a minute or so. But anyway, so now take these three screws at the top injection pump. There, all three screws are at the top injection pump. Then you carefully jiggle it loose a little bit. It's kind of glued down. Or really glued down in my case. And I just had it off a week and a half ago. You just tap it or something with a screwdriver. There you go. Okay. You just lift her straight off of there. It's the inside the injection pump cover. This is your on-off solenoid that lets the motor run. And this solenoid deal back here is what um, the cold advance runs off of. Okay, so now this is where the turkey baster comes in handy because you want to suck out all that diesel fuel so that you can see the little screw inside there. Okay, so now we're going to suck out the diesel fuel out of the injection pump. I suck it out with a turkey baster. It's kind of a messy job, but it seems to work. Okay, <clears throat> next. Now would be a good time to take out your digital camera, take a picture of all this linkage, how it goes in here. Because this is all has this linkage has to be removed here. Okay, this is the guide pin. That silver thing in there that goes this way. There's an Allen head on the back of it. It took me a long time to figure that out. 
an Allen head on the back that I think is 5 millimeters or something. So you take that out with your Allen wrench. And then, okay, it takes a 6 millimeter Allen wrench. I already have this one kind of loose. Yeah, there we go. Takes a little bit of, has a little bit of, uh, um, makes it a little bit hard to turn because there's springs and stuff sitting on. Okay, what I like to do is once the threads are out of the housing, which they are about now, I think. Oh, a couple more turns. Okay. Oh my god, there we go. Okay, what I like to do is pull it out until, until it's right about there. Just so that little spring deal doesn't fall off, because I don't know what it does, and I don't want to find out this way. Okay, next, you push the throttle deal, this is the throttle, wide open. And, it's hard to do with one finger, but kick this. Okay, that'll work too. You take all this crap on the injection pump. That's what that is. And this deal comes off of here. But I don't know which way it's supposed to go on. So I'll just leave it like that. That hole right there at the tip of my finger, that's where your power screw is located. So now you turn the engine in the direction of engine travel and the engine operation with a breaker bar. Do not use a starter because the engine could start. Turn with the breaker bar until you see a little Allen head screw pop up there. This is a, this, it's a, this is what you need to turn the engine over. 15 16 ratchet deep socket that'll reach through the pulleys on the end of the crankshaft. That'll reach through there just perfectly so you don't have to take the pulleys off. Save me a bunch of time. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, probably not. It's not shiny down there, but we got the power screw or the fuel screw lined up. Now, take your 5 30 seconds. Woo. 5 30 seconds inch Allen screw or Allen wrench. Shove it down that hole till you feel it lock up. This is how it is right now. See how it's pointing to the side. Okay, for engine without a turbo, like just for that big ugly Jesus air fuel turn here, most people will give it an eighth of a turn. If you got turbo, I give it a quarter turn and then go from there with your turbo and your pyrometer. With an naturally aspirated engine without the turbo, don't go more than one eighth turn unless you have a pyrometer to watch how hot stuff's getting because you don't want to melt your engine. That's just wrecks your day. So we'll do this. Mine's already good as it is, so I'll leave it as it is. So now, I'll sh now it'll be direct reversal of taking or putting it. Shoot, taking it apart. It'll be direct reversal to put it back together. Except for putting the top on, which I'll show you how. Okay, I got the guide pin back in and this linkage here. Now, it's a good idea to make sure all your linkage moves nice and freely. Doesn't hang up on anything. Okay, after you've established that everything's moving, and moving proper, take your top, top injection pump, whoa, top injection pump. Now, put it on, set it on the injection pump back a ways, like, not straight on there, set it back a ways, slide it forward until the screw holes line up, because that way you make sure that the linkage inside isn't jammed in wide open throttle position, because that would really raise some hell with your pistons and stuff if it wrapped, if you fired this thing up and it went all the way up to 7,000 RPM or something stupid like that, because the governor was stuck wide open. Okay, put the screws in there, put your return uh, line back on, and all the other crap you took off, like the cruise control servo and your air filter and all that deal, and fire it up. Here's Okay, here's the final thing you should do before starting on the truck. I don't got anything together yet, but is take turn the key on, take this pink wire here, touch it onto its terminal, and listen really closely. You'll hear all the linkages and that solenoid moving. That means you've done it right. If you don't hear anything moving, do not start it and take the top off. Make sure nothing's hung up and put the top on the way I showed you and it should work. If not, the solenoid's died on you. But that's it.